Hey guys, my name is Matthew, and today we're talking about the top five sci-fi novels of 2020. Here we go. Okay, a couple quick caveats before we get into it. Number one is that these are novels that were actually put out in 2020. These aren't my favorite novels ever, and I'm doing the video in 2020. These are literally novels from 2020. Second caveat is that I didn't add any novels that were like continuations of previous novels, so no like middle of the series things. I did do some maybe that were the start of series or trilogies, but none that you don't have to read anything else to, to be able to get into these books, if that makes sense. So these are books that were written in 2020 that you could pick up and read right now with no further ado. Okay, let's get into it. The first book on this list is Doors of Eden, which is a book about monster hunters, and it quickly turns from that, which feels a little more fantasy to me, into like multiverse, parallel universe stuff, and lots and lots of science. The beginning of this novel may feel a little bit dry for some people. I really enjoyed it, but it's very thick with science. So if you like your science fiction with a lot of science in it, this is a great book for you. This is a contemporary science fiction novel, so that means, you know, kind of today's time or close to today's time it should make it very accessible for people because you don't have to learn about a whole nother world. Well, I think the beginning could be a little bit dry for some people. Even if you don't like that kind of thing, the novel picks up quickly and is really enjoyable and a very fun read. This book is epic, it's very thought-provoking, and very, very interesting. If you like sci-fi novels that are current day with lots of science in them, this is a great novel for you. The next novel on my list, number four, is Hearts of Oak. This is a novel that takes place in a city that is weird. It's different than any other city I've ever read about. It's made out of wood, and it's growing. And... We kind of start this novel with a king and his talking cat, which makes you think it's going to be maybe a fantasy thing, and it is not a fantasy novel at all. Actually, to call it a novel isn't quite fair. It's a novella. This is a fast read. It's quick. You're going to enjoy it if you like short reads, and it's really quirky. It's interesting. It's weird, and it's science fiction, not fantasy. The story has lots of twists and turns in it. Some of them are easy to guess. Some of them are typical and you're gonna go, oh yeah, I can kind of see that coming. And some of them you will not see coming. They're really, really interesting. And this is a great, fun, short novel. You're gonna enjoy it a lot. And I think it's thought provoking. I think you're really gonna enjoy this. The next book on my list is another contemporary sci-fi novel, which I'm not necessarily super into contemporary sci-fi, but both of these were done really, really well. This one's called The City We Became. It takes place in New York City, and it has this interesting concept that cities have a soul. And New York City is kind of in this transition period. Uh, it has five souls, I think, and there are kind of these avatars that represent the different boroughs of New York City. This one is a great novel because the characters and, well, let's start with the characters. The characters are so deep, they're really real um, and all their horrible, beautiful ways that humans are really real, and so I, I really appreciated that. I also think the descriptions of New York City are really fascinating and really beautiful. They really reminded me of kind of big city living and, you know, the times I've spent in New York City. And I think that, you know, if you have any kind of joy for that kind of writing style that really just describes things in a real way that makes them so beautiful, I think you really enjoy this novel. It also has some science fiction elements of like multiple dimensions and like I said, cities with souls and it, it's interesting and I think you'll enjoy that if you enjoy writing about like modern day cities. The next book on the list is The Book of Coley? Co Coli? Oh, I actually don't know how you pronounce it, but it's an excellent book. This is a post-apocalyptic um, medieval times meets futuristic tech type book. It's uh, really interesting. In the future, the plants have turned against us. They've become like aggressive and um, and they've made it so instead of our big cities like we have now, we really have isolated very small villages and towns and we get to follow our main character. One thing I will say as a as a negative for this book is it felt initially like it was going to be your typical young adult setup and I wasn't a big fan of it until about halfway through, and then it redeemed itself in a big way. So if you're like not sure as you're getting through it, you're like, I can't handle this, it may make a big switch for you and you may really enjoy it. 
this book is actually a setup for the trilogies and i think that's one thing it didn't do super well is the first book feels like a setup but it's so interesting the ideas are really captivating really thought provoking and i think you're going to enjoy this if you like those kind of post-apocalyptic novels the last book on my list and the coveted number one position is to sleep in a sea of stars by paolini this is a space opera, so it's big, it's expansive, it's epic, and it's really well done. A couple things you need to know about it. One, it's really long. This is an 800 or 900 page book, so to, this is a little bit of an investment to get into it, but I really think it's worth it. This is um, a huge world, lots of space stuff, and like first contact with aliens, and so if those are your type of science fiction elements, then this is going to be the book for you, for sure. The plot is really fast-paced. I think one thing that people sometimes don't like about space operas, and they're like, oh, it's not really sciencey it's just like space this one has a lot of science elements in it so there aren't necessarily a ton of really unique ideas in this novel but there's lots of science and uh, i'd say paulina has really done his research in some of those scientific elements uh, it seems like he did a good job of of really including those in the book and making them really readable to sleep in the sea of stars is an excellent book and i highly recommend it if you're even a little bit interested in a space opera these are my top five science fiction books of the year. Tell me in the comments, what books do you really enjoy science fiction books from this year? Which ones on my list have you read and which ones did you love? And is there anything missing from the list that you feel like really should be there? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, feel free to like and subscribe. And as always, stay safe out there.